Hi, I'm Amanda and I'm the curator at the Fraser History Museum. I'm really excited to talk to you today about one of my favorite people from history, Frederick Law Olmsted. If you saw our exhibit last summer, Olmsted's Louisville, you probably recognize this portrait. It was painted by John Singer Sargent and the original currently hangs at the Biltmore Estates in Asheville, North Carolina. Though the original and the one we had in the exhibit was much bigger than this one. Frederick Law Olmsted is known as the father of landscape architecture, and he is most famous for his work on Central Park in New York City. However, he and his firm completed over 6,000 projects in the United States, so you're probably familiar with some of his other work too. He did things like the Biltmore Estate grounds in Asheville, North Carolina, which I mentioned, but also the grounds of the Capitol in Washington, D.C., and Rocky Mountain National Park in Colorado. In Kentucky, we have 269 of Olmsted and his firm's projects. You're probably familiar with some of these too. They worked on the grounds for the Louisville Free Public Library and for the Universities of Kentucky and of Louisville. Anyone who was anyone in Olmsted's time had one of his designs and in Kentucky that meant a lot of bourbon. So Olmsted and his firm designed the grounds for a lot of distilleries and the homes for a lot of bourbon barons. What you might be most familiar with in Louisville is the park system. In Louisville, we have 18 Olmsted design parks and four parkways that connect them together. And this was a very specific design choice on Olmsted's part. He designed the parks and the parkways to connect together in a way that anyone that lived in the city could go to a park like Atmosphere close to their house. He didn't want just the people that were wealthy enough to be able to afford a carriage ride out to the park to be able to enjoy the park-like atmosphere. Our park system is really important because it's one of only three completed Olmsted park systems in the country. The other two are in Buffalo, New York and Boston, Massachusetts. But I could talk about Frederick Law Olmsted all day. Some of my colleagues from the Fraser would like to introduce you to some of their favorite Olmsted parks. Take it away, Heather. Hi, I'm Heather and this is my park, Shelby Park. So this park was built on land that was purchased by the Louisville mayor at the time himself. That was Mayor Barth in 1907. And in 1911, it got a landmark that I love, which is a Carnegie Library. So this is the only Olmsted Park in the city that has its own Carnegie Library. These were funded by wealthy businessman, Andrew Carnegie. And of the 3,500 libraries that existed in America by 19 1920, 1,600 of them were built by him. And so Louisville had its very own right here. It's also got several other branches, um, but this one's in a park. And so now the Shelby Park branch is still part of the Louisville Free Public Library system, but this is a community center. But I love getting here to come and see the beautiful history and this gorgeous building that still stands on the grounds. Here I am in Cherokee Park, ridden my bike of course, it's in the morning, not many people here, that's the best time I think for me, um, but you see uh, that, I guess, pagoda and of course Hogan's Fountain, which is right behind me, that was created by Ina Diando, famous uh, sculptor, a woman who lived here in Louisville and is known for lots of different sculptures, uh, but this one has turtles on it and they're bolted down. They were bolted down at one point in the 70s, I think from underneath, because they had, there was some vandalism in the 60s and 70s and people were taking the, the um, they were taking the, the turtles and then either they, were, either they were taking them outright or they were placing them at various places in the park. So they were mischievous vandals, but I think that's an interesting note um, about this park. And also, you probably can't hear it, it's gone away, but there was a, a woodpecker a red-bellied woodpecker um, in the tree right behind me. It's another reason I love this park, the, the birds. Hello there, Brian West here, and this is my park, Iroquois Park. I like to come to Iroquois because when I come, I often run around the scenic loop that sits right below where I'm standing at now. This is a hill which overlooks the city. The land which would become Iroquois was originally acquired by the city in 1888 and later on developed by Frederick Law Olmsted in 1891. Including the scenic loop, other amenities which Iroquois now has are 
horse riding, and walking trails. And Iroquois Amphitheater. Built in 1938 and renovated in 2004, the theater seats over 2,300 patrons and is wheelchair accessible and is host to many live stage acts and is run by Metro Parks. Hi folks, Andy Trinan, President and CEO at the Fraser History Museum here. Thank you for watching Virtual Fraser. My favorite of all the Olmstead Parks is right here, Tyler Park. I love all of the Olmstead Parks, but this one happens to be in my neighborhood. I live on Tyler Parkway. It's in the Tyler Park neighborhood, and this is where I spend the most of my time. It is a beautiful 13-acre park, kind of an urban park that is known for the signature tunnel and the bridge that runs over Baxter Avenue. It was first built in 1910 and right now is going through a renovation project, a $1.1 million restoration project going underway, which is putting in some new tennis courts and all kinds of cool things. This park was named after Henry S. Tyler, who was the mayor of Louisville from 1891 to 1896. He died in office and this was an area in town, this was really what was considered suburban Louisville. There were electric cars that ran from this part to downtown, and that's where people went to work every day. This is where I go to play every day, sometimes with Ivy here, who's showing you her worst side. Come here. There's Ivy. This is my dog, and this is the park that she spends her most time in because I walk her here, and my daughter sometimes give her a short walk as well. This is the closest park, so... Tyler Park for the Trident family.